So if you want to come into a reclining position, Sarah, in lay down, you can yes. put your legs <laughs> on all if you like. Yeah. And um, we here will just do a reclining. So there's the two bolsters today. So you can, if you want to do a double height, or with the double height, your feet may hang off the edge. And in fact, I'll just put my legs down this end so that it's more evident what I'm doing. As you hang your feet, your knees are supported by the cushions, your feet are kind of hanging in the air. Yeah. And with this, it takes all the pressure off the heels. And in reflexology, the heels and just this base here are all the kind of um, around the colon area, around okay. the sacral area, and the root chakra. So there's a lot of when there's a lot of uh, pressure here, that this this point here can be, um, you know, can be in terms of energy, it can be sources of frustration, of tiredness, of exhaustion, um, but also of creativity and being able to get a little bit of space, you know. So when we have the feet floating, it just takes the pressure off the heels. Now, when you're in reclining as well, making sure you're nice and warm. But also, if the tummy, if you feel in any way anxious or if there's a lot going on at the moment, placing a blanket or a little weighted, you know, even sometimes an eye pillow or, or the hands, placing one hand on the heart, one hand on the tummy, both hands on the tummy, or a little bit of a weight around the tummy area. And if you have a blanket, you can tuck it into the sides. So it's almost like you lift up the hips a little and wrap yourself. So it gives that blanket of security. And let the breath settle. So with each breath out, you're dropping down into the floor, sensing the back of the body on the floor, the back of the head. Letting that watch on do not disturb so it doesn't start talking to us in the middle of the class. <laughs> you never know what's going to talk to you. Absolutely. It probably will talk anyway. Record button. Yeah. And if you do hear the chimes that are in the room, it's a nice way to coordinate your breath in and your breath out with it. If you can't hear the chimes, it's just a gentle awareness of the breath, a pattern in maybe for the count of four or five or six and a breath out for the same amount of time. So you may be counting in one, two, three, four, and then out one, two, three, four. So this awareness of this ebb and flow of the breath, however, giving yourself plenty of permission that if the awareness on the breath is uncomfortable and if it isn't just kind of sitting with you this evening, then simply allowing it to melt away and bringing the awareness instead to the body lying on the floor, to the points of connection with the floor. So giving yourself that couple of moments to decide what would I like my anchor to be? Awareness on the breath. Awareness on the body. Or perhaps awareness on sounds in the distance or close by. And of course, the eyes can be open or they can be closed, whatever you prefer.
So at all times, giving yourself plenty of choice and permission to adjust and move as necessary. And you may notice the mind jumping around, jumping around on thoughts, perhaps worries, things to do, perhaps conversations had or to be had. That's okay, that's what minds do. So reminding yourself, ah, this again. So this is what minds do. So imagining perhaps that the mind is like a puppy, always trying to look for the next thing. So gently and firmly, like stroking the puppy on the head, going, it's okay, come on, we're going to go back here now to whichever anchor you feel most comfortable most, or most called to today. Perhaps bringing awareness now to the head placed on the floor. Noticing the pressure perhaps at the back of the head. Noticing if the head is squarely centered between the shoulders. Or does it feel like it's leaning to one side or the other? Noticing the little curve at the back of the neck. How are those shoulders? Do they feel like they're down away from the ears? Perhaps needing a little adjustment to slide the shoulder blades down the back. Perhaps noticing the gentle curve on the back of the body where there's a little less pressure in certain parts at the back. And then coming down to the sacral area. So the the lower back, maybe the backs of the hips, where there's a little more connection with the floor. And that point where the hips may be bent with the legs either raised on the surface or up along the wall. Being aware of the front of the body, maybe the slight rise and fall with the breath in and the breath out. Maybe not, that's okay. We're not going making anything happen. We're just noticing how is it? Perhaps noticing something, perhaps not. Perhaps being a little uncomfortable, perhaps not. As best as you can, just welcoming it all. Going, oh, okay, this is how this is today. It's interesting. Noticing where the hands are, if they're resting on the floor or on the tummy. Maybe the sensations around the palms of the hands and the fingertips. If there are any. Now moving down the body, down to the lower parts of the legs and the feet. Maybe even being aware of their sensations around the toes, around the ankles. Maybe not. Are you aware if there's parts of the body that are actually still quite tense or holding on? Perhaps bringing the awareness to that part of the body and just inviting a softness, inviting that perhaps the breath 
There's a gentle softening and opening, allowing gravity to just drop the body down into the floor as best as you can. Allowing the floor to take the weight of the body. Remembering too that at any point, if you wish to change the anchor of your awareness, you can do that. Listening to sounds or opening the eyes or coming back to the back of the body on the floor or this gentle breath, counting in and out. Bringing the awareness back to the head now, the upper half of the body, around the jaw perhaps, maybe the facial muscles. Is there any clenching? Is there any tightness? Sometimes we can miss that there's, you know, tightness around the eyes or the eyebrows, around the mouth the teeth, the jaw, even the sinuses, they can be deeply held within the muscles of the face, the back of the throat. And not trying to change anything, just witnessing. Is there anything here today? If there is, just having that gentle curiosity. Going sort of like saying, I see you, thank you, I acknowledge you. Maybe even I understand why you're here. Noticing too then throughout the rest of the body, is there anywhere where you are drawn to where there may be a little bit of tension that maybe you didn't notice earlier? Sometimes there can be a squeezing or a tightness even in hands or shoulders, hips or knees or the tummy. Wherever it may be, just bringing your awareness perhaps to it and directing the breath to that area. Just inviting if it feels right, if it feels comfortable with the, the breath directed to an area that is a slight maybe opening or softening of the muscles there to each breath out. Just if it feels right for you. And then if it feels right, and if you feel comfortable in doing so, just lifting up the hands and just rotating the wrists. Really slow movement. Very mindful of how the wrist joints feel. Maybe the fingers are spread. But there's an opening to the wrists and the hands. But the forearm or the upper arms are still resting on the floor. So there's support still there. But it might feel like a bit effortful 
lifting the hands up against gravity and just changing directions with those circles now. Just moving the wrists in the opposite direction. Perhaps breathing into it. The pausing in center and moving each of the fingers, each of the digits. So you might hear a few little clicks and cracks into each finger, into each thumb. Maybe doing the same with the toes as we move the fingers. Just wriggling the toes, bringing a little movement in. And if you have the space, rotating the feet so that you're moving the wrists and the ankles in circles in one direction. You may even, you know, getting close to noticing the arches of the feet as you rotate the ankles. And the opposite direction. So kind of getting curious, this slow movement, and yet I can really become aware of particular parts of my feet, maybe that I wasn't noticing earlier. And then back to a neutral position, the feet are relaxed. Bringing the arms up towards the ceiling. So you're lifting the upper arms off the floor now and bringing the arms above the head down towards the floor if that feels comfortable. Resting them here on the floor for a moment if it feels very tight across the chest. Bending the elbows, giving yourself the space for the elbows to come out to the sides. And maybe the backs of the hands will rest on the floor. How is this? Perhaps it's too uncomfortable in the upper chest. If so, bringing the elbows down further. So making any adjustments needed to give you that support. And if it's too much, the lower arms can come downwards. So with so much, you know, working on computers, driving, we can shorten the fibers in the upper chest. So playing around with this, this sense of opening up the upper chest, how is that maybe you know, moving the arms into different positions to feel into which is most comfortable. And when you feel that you have a position that you may like to rest in for a couple of moments, simply breathing here. And if you feel like yawning, letting that happen. That's just extra oxygen getting into the body. When you're ready, letting the arms float back up towards the ceiling again. This time as they're pointing up towards the ceiling, interlacing the fingers, turning the hands inside out and pressing the insides of the hands up towards the ceiling. Maybe noticing how does that feel to shrug the shoulders up and down towards the floor. So it's broadening the upper back and then coming back towards the floor again, shrugging up and down. And maybe even letting the arms, the lengthened arms come overhead down towards the floor. It may not go down to the floor fully. And just moving this straightened arms that are inside out, if you like, back and forth above the head, perhaps in front of the face, down towards the tummy and then back up overhead again. How is this? Because it stretches the insides of the wrists as well. So it may feel enough or too much for the forearms. So sensing into what's right for you. And then the next time they come in front of the face again, just turning the hands so that the palms, the hands are facing towards your face and then unlinking those hands again. Rotating the wrists. Maybe there's a few more clicks and cracks, pressing the hands away, just moving the hands in whatever direction and movement that feels right for you. Wiggling the fingers and then letting the arms come back down by the sides. Bending the knees and just resting the feet on whatever surface, so the wall or the bolsters and a little space between the knees. Gently sway the knees from side to side. This time we're sensing into the lower back into the hips and not looking for any pressure onto the knees or onto the ankles. So if the hips are feeling tight, the knees may come to a certain point and that's where you should pause. So as you sway from side to side, maybe 
turning the head in the opposite direction. So slowing down this breath and this movement to match with the breath in and the breath out. Making sure not to go too quickly so you get, don't get dizzy or lightheaded. But also the slowing down allows you to pause and notice how's the back, the waist, the tops of the legs. Perhaps you'd like to even stay on one side for a couple of breaths. When you pause at a certain part, you may notice a little tightness up into the shoulders, up into the upper back. Coming through the center again, if you've paused on one side and resting on the other side. So giving yourself those couple of moments to move from side to side. The next time you come up to center, pausing here for a moment, and if you're comfortable, bring the soles of the feet together to allow the knees to fall out to the side. So this is a hip rotation, but if it doesn't feel comfortable for you and you prefer to just keep the feet flat on the floor, that's absolutely, or sorry, on the bolsters or on the wall, that's absolutely fine. If you would like to go ahead, you bring the soles of the feet together and the knees fall out to the side. The arms can stay by the sides if you like, or you could bring the arms up overhead, bend in the elbows, bring the fingertips together. So the arms are at a diamond shape along with the legs. Backs of the arms would, as best as they can, rest on the floor above the head. But again, this is quite an opening posture. So if it doesn't feel comfortable at this point, that's not a problem at all. You could rest the hands on the belly, and simply keep the feet flat on the surface. Whichever is most comfortable, just pausing here for a breath or two. If the arms are overhead, bring the arms back down by the sides, just helping the knees back up to the center and then bringing the knees in towards the tummy. So resting the hands across the fronts of the knees and giving a little rock from side to side. And the back of the head can stay on the floor. You're just noticing how the back of the body's feeling and maybe even bringing the hands below the knees and you can widen the knees a little just so that you can rock from side to side and broadening out the back of the body and then resting the feet back down again and rolling over onto one side resting here for a moment so as you rest here the knees come up towards the tummy Hands are resting in front of the face. Chin is tucked in towards the chest. So that nice rounding of the back, releasing all of the effort, allowing the blood flow, revitalize the spine. Noticing how the feet are, how the chest is feeling, how the Hold back of the body, this rounding, how does that feel? And then when you're ready, using the upper hand to press the floor away, 
and we'll come up into tabletop for a moment just for a little movement back and forth if there's any pain or discomfort in wrists use a, a pillow or a cushion in front and just rest the forearms on it we're going to do a very very gentle very very mindful cat cow so with the cat cow normally our hands are flat on the floor gaze is just ahead and we're lifting up the tailbone and lifting up the head while we drop the tummy this time with the forearm on the cushion or on the pillows the hands can be resting together if you like and you're tucking the chin in towards the chest and rounding the back and then you're dropping the tummy and lifting the head so the movement is much more intuitive we're not drawing in the belly and getting this full movement of the spine if that doesn't feel like what you need right now the movement can be more isolated to a particular part of the spine if that feels best curling under the toes as well if that feels better you know it's playing around with it a little perhaps it's isolating the movement down at the hips Perhaps you'd like to just keep the head hanging, maybe even the head resting on the pillow. So the movement is in the lower back, around the hips. How is that feeling in the back? So this little tilting, arching of the, of the spine or a rounding of the back, and then a dropping of the tummy. So you get this little bending back and forth of the spine perhaps connecting it with the breath as you breathe in just rounding the back breathe out letting the tummy just drop down again maybe even a little figure of eight if that feels what you'd like to do so you can simply move the hips in a figure of eight back and forth. Maybe sitting down towards the heels, resting the forehead on the pillows. Or coming forward again. This gentle back and forth, fronts of the feet on the floor maybe. You know, letting there be a little intuitive movement a little intuition to what feels like you'd like to do today sitting back towards the heels or coming up arching the spine or dropping the tummy this movement of one hip to one side and then to the other so you're moving your spine from side to side up and down back and forth And if you choose to, if you'd like to, coming to one of those positions and just resting there for a moment. So it might be toes curled under, sitting towards the heels, forehead resting on the pillows. Or it could be one of the others. It could be fronts of the feet on the floor, with the head coming forward, perhaps tailbone lifted, tummy drop down, head lifted. Whatever feels most appropriate for you just giving yourself that space that permission to feel into ah this is what i would like to do right now if there's cracks which i can hear off my back if there's little cracks as long as they're not painful that's okay just air sometimes trapped in the joints. And this movement can help shift them. And then when you're ready, coming back upright, we're going to move into child's pose. So a couple of pillows or bolsters, nice height. Again, depending on how the knees are, if you feel that you would prefer to have um, 
the legs extended out to the sides, that's absolutely fine. Um, I'll just show you the couple of options. So you can put the top pillow or the top bolster at an angle down like that so that it gives a little bit of support to the belly. If the tummy is feeling in any way uncomfortable or anything, using a, a blanket across the tummy, like when it's folded, can give a nice little bit of support. And that just allows you to have that extra little bit of, yeah, it's comfort, I think, across the tummy as we bring the forearms down towards the floor. And so the knees will be on either side of the pillows or the bolsters, forearms resting and head turned to one side. However, if the knees are uncomfortable and you prefer to have the legs extended, this can be a little bit more difficult because you may need to double up with the bolsters a little to give a bit more height. It's very difficult to <laughs> rest right down on the, on the bolsters or the pillows. However, if you double them up, you can get a little bit of height there and the hands can rest around the outside just to allow you to turn the head to one side. So that can be quite comforting as well. And again, it's the support on the front of the body when we feel a bit overwhelmed, anxious, tired. Interlacing the fingers can give that little bit of support to the outside of the pillows. If the pillows are very soft, you might need loads of them. Or you could use the corner of the bed and you could have the pillows laid on that corner of the bed with your legs on either side to rest the hands onto the pillow. So, you know, use everything that's around you. And then turning the head to one side can just give you a little bit of space. And if you choose to, in a little bit, I'll let you know when we will turn our heads to the other side. If you choose to, you can turn the head in the other direction now, only if that feels right, or you can at any point make any adjustments. So if you find that at any time that you'd like to even come upright a little bit more, that it just feels too much of a forward fold, give yourself that permission. You know, fold movement or change into the practice. So it's the intention of the movement becomes a significant part of the practice. As you notice, I, I would like to make a change. I'm going to make a change. I'm making the change. And that's a really lovely message to give to yourself, this acknowledgement of what do I need right now? This acknowledgement and this permission
And then when you're ready, just starting to lift up the head. We'll move the bolsters or the pillows away to the side. If you're kneeling, just coming into a sitting position. If you're sitting, bending up the knees and a little bit of space still between the legs and putting the hands out to the side to give balance. I'm dropping the knees over to one side. So we get this gentle little twist as we look over to one side and letting the knees come back up to center, letting them drop to the other. So a little bit of space between the feet lets the, the knees kind of come into this like running man shape, I'm gonna say on the floor. So if the feet are wide separated apart, they can tip over to one side. And then they come back up and you see the way the feet are nice and wide and then dropping them to the other side. So one hip kind of lifts up so that you can almost twist. That's it, yeah. And then we come back, let the knees lift again and dropping down to the other side and one hip will lift. So we start off a little bit lower and then we progressively allow that twist to be a little bit deeper so the, the opposite hand might come to the outside of the knee. Yeah. And we're looking over the shoulder and bring the hands behind again. The knees come back up to center. And then the knees drop over to the other side. Hand comes up off the floor and just rests on the knee, looking over the shoulder. So this again deepens that twist into the hips, the tops of the hips and the waist. Once more, bring the hands behind. Knees come back up. Drop the knees down towards the floor. Hand comes to the outside of the knee, looking over the shoulder. Breathing here. How's the waist? How's the back? Or the shoulders. And then last time, knees come up to center. And looking over this knee, over this shoulder, the opposite shoulder. And then back to the middle. This time we're going to lie down on the floor and do half frog. Now with half frog, we're lying on the front. So and it's a hip rotation again. It said there's a lot of emotions held in the hips, but also an awful lot of energy just gets stuck here from sitting, driving, computer work. So what we want is just to increase the amount of energy around this area, the sacral area, the hips, the lower abdominals, by bringing in a little movement, hip rotations in and out, um, as well as the flexibility that we do with the spine, with the cat cow. So you can have um, like a blanket folded on the floor that you can rest the knee that we're going to bend on. It gives a little bit of extra height. And when you're lying down on your front, I'll take the cardigan off just so that it's a bit clear. Maybe the scarf is in the way too. So as we lie down, one knee is going to bend. So you're coming down onto your front. And if you feel that you need a little support under the chest, Place some cushions or some blankets underneath the chest as well. And that knee will bend out to the side and rest on the blanket. The other leg is lengthened behind. And getting into a position that is comfortable. So a head can be turned in one direction or the other. The arms can be out to the side, the elbows bent. And one leg is lengthened behind. And if you can imagine that the leg that's bent, as best as you can, you have your hip and knee in line and your knee and ankle in line. But not to, not to be too rigid about it, not to be you know, trying to force any shape, if it feels more comfortable to have it bent up, if there's any discomfort there, that's absolutely fine. It's, you know, playing around with it a little to see what's most comfortable. And then as best as you can, softening into, softening and opening with the breath, allowing gravity to draw us down, allowing the mat and the floor to support us. 
But again, if you're feeling that this is just simply not a posture that feels comfortable for you, straightening the legs if you choose and making any adjustments for this, it is a, a forward, a front forward facing um, posture. So making any adjustments if you feel that you'd like to have a cushion in front of the chest and have the legs simply extended, that's fine. Again, it's plenty of permission. And maybe even adjusting the blanket so the blanket is across the lower abdominals. So that there's a support in the lower half of the front of the body. And the head can be turned in one direction. And then in a short while, we can turn the head in the opposite. If the knee is bent, I'll let you know when we'll swap over to the other side. If you'd like to, you can turn the head in the other direction now, or if the knee is bent, you can straighten the leg and simply bend the other, the other side, turning the head also. So whichever position is most comfortable. And again, giving yourself that permission to adjust as necessary. If you find that one side is different to the other, Simply acknowledging it and really honoring that.
When you're ready, just sliding the hands back underneath the shoulders, pressing the floor away. Really moving slowly, peeling yourself away from the floor, coming back towards the heels, maybe walking the hands back and curling the toes under, lengthening the arms out in front. The elbows are up off the floor, ears in line with the upper arms. So you're dropping your hips back down towards the heels that are raised and you're lengthening the arms forward. If the forehead comes down towards the floor and it's comfortable there, that's okay, but not making that the aim. And then with the arms lengthened out in front, walking them over to one side. So the knees stay where they are, simply lengthening the arms over to one side. So you're stretching into the one side of the body. How does that side of the body feel? Perhaps breathing into the space between each of the ribs, into the intercostal muscles. With each breath out, a lengthening and a softening, just as best as you can. Just there, there being an invitation, if that feels right. And you know, again, if you find that, no, this is not for me right now, that's okay. That's part of the practice of being aware as to what feels good and right for you at this moment in time. And walking the hands through the center, bringing them over to the other side. Again, this lengthening into the other side of the body. And it might feel different on this side to the other. Breathing into the space between the ribs, the intercostal muscles, to each breath in and out, a softening and opening, just as best as you can. Walking the hands back to center, maybe walking them back, foot bending the arms and resting your forehead onto the forearms. So the knees are resting on the floor, forearms are on the floor, your forehead is on your arms, and the toes are curled under. And then coming up onto hands and knees. And we're going to come down onto the back. It's a little transition into the final posture into relaxation into corpse, but bringing a blanket down onto the floor to begin. Turn on. You could have it folded if you like, but have it so that there's a little comfort and a little padding for the whole back of the body. So it may be just the length of your body. Perhaps it's a little shorter. It's just a little bit of support. It's almost like a, a little bit of a, a back bend. It's obviously with a folded blanket, it's not very high at all. But lowering down to rest from the top of the sacrum, so the top of the buttocks, resting down onto the blanket. The head rests on the floor. Bringing the arms out to the sides if you have the space, otherwise bringing them by the side of the palms face up. Feet a little bit, a hip width distance apart. Knees bent and a gentle little tilt of the pelvis. So we're just going to do this very, very slow movement of drawing in the lower abdominals, flattening the lower back. So you're, it feels like your hips are slightly lifted off the floor, but we're not lifting them right up and then resting back down again. So that little arch comes back into the lower back and you tilt the pelvis all the way. So breathing in, you're drawing in the belly, flattening the lower back, this tiny little movement of hips lifting and then back down again, releasing the tummy as you breathe in. So the tummy expands. So this lovely softening and opening, breathing in, flattening the lower back, breathing out, a little arch back into the lower back. This pelvic tilt, which helps us to engage and release the tummy muscles. So important for toning of the tummy muscles from the inside. So breathing in, flattening the lower back, breathing out, releasing, softening the tummy. 
this tilt, breathing in, drawing in the belly and breathing out, softening the belly. Just doing this in your own time. This little tilt. How is it to kind of press the tummy out? It's so against what we're conditioned to do, drawing in the belly all the time. It's sort of a radical departure, but it brings great tone into the tummy muscles from the inside. This ebb and flow, this contraction and release. And just once more, breathing in, breathing out. And bringing the knees up. So lifting up the knees, hands resting on the fronts of the, of the knees. So they're still a little bit wide apart. And draw a little circle with the knees. The arms straighten and bend as the knees move around in a circle, in one direction, and then in the opposite direction. Then place one foot down onto the floor, bring one knee into the chest, and then straightening the leg, pressing the heel away, interlacing the fingers behind that thigh, so pressing the heel away, and then pointing the foot, pressing the heel, pointing the foot, and a little circle in one direction with the ankle. So moving that foot in a circle and then the opposite direction. And then bring the knee into the chest, place the foot back on the floor, lifting the other foot. Bringing the hands behind the thigh, pressing the heel up towards the ceiling, pointing the foot, flexing the foot, point and flex. Circle in one direction. Circle in the opposite. And then bringing the knee into the chest again and placing the foot down on the floor. If you'd like to make any adjustments to the blanket underneath, just rolling off the side of the blanket and then using the upper hand to press the floor away. So movement always really slow and mindful. And then widening out that blanket and preparing our space for Shavasana. So if you'd like to have a blanket underneath, have it nice and wide so that you can wrap the blanket then around the arms. A pillow for underneath the head or a folded blanket for underneath the head. And then you can either do the double height for underneath the knees again so that your feet are hanging, or you can do the two bolsters. So there's one for underneath the knees and one for underneath the heels. But whichever way, making sure that those feet are up off the floor. And would you like another blanket as well, Sarah, for over you? Yeah. No problem at all. In fact, I'll we'll put it this way so this will go over your feet as well. Now, put it over your feet as well. And is the pillow okay, or would you like another pillow? Yeah. These pillows are a bit high, so maybe what I'll do is give you a blanket. There's two here, so there's one that's a small pillow like this, or else. Yeah. There you go. How's that? That looks good. Yeah. Here's another blanket anyway, as well, just in case if you decide that you'd like to create another little bit of height. So once you're comfortable, you have 
you have the position that you're most rested in. Just allowing, giving yourself that permission to come to the anchor of preference. So the anchor of preference being the awareness of the body or the breath or perhaps on a point, a fixed point that you'd like to have a gentle gaze towards. So allowing this stilling of the mind as the body stills itself as well. And if you're comfortable then, we bring the awareness down, down, down to the feet, down to the toes, down to the soles of the feet and the heels. Bringing any awareness to any sensations that may be here or none. In front of the feet, around the ankles, and the feet as a whole. Not going looking for any sensations, but just noticing if any arise. And then to the lower parts of the legs, the calves and the shins. Just spending a moment here, noticing if, if anything arises. It's okay if nothing, if there is no sensation that you're aware of. Bring the awareness, then moving the attention towards the knees, fronts of the knees, sides, and the back. Perhaps the mind has wandered, that's okay. These are all the normal things that minds do. And then moving the awareness of the attention to the upper parts of the legs, these thighs, the large bones, the hamstrings and the quads, all the way up to the hips. Being aware of the legs as a whole. And then to the pelvic area, the sacral area, the lower abdominals, the hips, all the organs within, the lower back, middle back and the upper back. tummy, the ribs, the chest, perhaps being aware of the lungs inflating and deflating as you breathe in and as you breathe out, the heart beating in the chest, and then bring the awareness down to the fingers and the thumbs and the hands palms of the hands, the backs of the hands, the wrists, the forearms and the elbows, the upper arms and the shoulders, the neck and the throat, and up into the head, the back of the head, the top of the head, Again, bring this awareness to the muscles of the face, the forehead, around the eyes. And knowing that you don't need to have any awareness of any sensations here, but just being aware that 
sometimes there is tension. There can be tightness in these places. Maybe you sense it, maybe you don't. And that's okay. It's just being curious as to what may arise in as non judgmental a way as you can, as best as we can. There's nothing right and there's nothing wrong. The bridge of the nose down to the nostrils, the cheekbones, the lips the tongue, the position of the tongue in the mouth, behind the teeth maybe, or at the top of the mouth. Maybe noticing your swallow. And this breath, this effortless effort, coming in, going out, This breath coming in from the top of the head, down to the fingertips, down to the toes, and back out again. As we expand and fill our space. And breathe out again. This ebb and flow. Becoming aware of your breath, perhaps deepening the breath in and out, rubbing fingertips together, maybe moving the wrists in a circle, wiggling the toes, moving the feet in a circle, rotating those ankles, <clears throat> bending the knees, <coughs> excuse me. Just a gentle sway of the knees from side to side. Maybe if you feel comfortable turning the head in the opposite direction to the knees. The movement nice and slow, pausing on each side if you like. Bringing the knees in towards the tummy, maybe resting the hands on the front of the knees and just a little rock from side to side. <clears throat> and when you're ready rolling over onto one side and resting there for a moment hands resting in front of the face knees bent up towards the tummy and then using the upper hand to press the floor away coming up into a seated position just for a moment to close the practice sitting in the easy cross-legged pose, maybe keeping the blanket around you, using pillows under the knees if you like, and a little bit of support. And bringing the hands together, just rubbing the hands together to notice the sensation of the hands. So bringing our awareness back to our senses. Bringing the hands to the top of the head, noticing how the mind is. Mind is one of our senses. How have the thoughts been? Have they been coming and going? Have they settled down? How's that puppy 
that puppy like behavior running after every thought. And that's okay, whatever it is, just being very mindful that that's what minds do, being very aware. That's okay. Remembering the hands round to the front of the face, cupping the hands over the eyes, letting the muscles of the eyes adjust, maybe blinking the eyes open behind the hands. How are the eyes feeling? And then maybe keeping a downward gaze or closing over the eyes again while we bring the hands down along the sides of the face, noticing how the jawline is. Being aware of hearing. If there's tension in the jaw or if the teeth are clenched, just noticing, just not trying to change anything, just taking a moment to acknowledge that ah, this is how it is at the moment. And bringing the hands down on either side of the neck and throat, maybe even around to the back if it's not comfortable having the hands around the front and being aware of your swallow, maybe the taste in your mouth, maybe the pulse, you can feel it in the neck or maybe not. And noticing also whether or not the muscles of the neck feel very tense and tight or if they feel softer, more pliable. And then one hand on the tummy, one hand on the heart and noticing how the breath is in the body and how the tummy is feeling. So we have our gut instinct, we have our heart. It feels so much. And we're connecting the mind, the body and the breath. So taking a nice big deep breath in through the nose and out through the mouth. Bringing the hands together in prayer position, pressing thumbs to the heart center, bowing the head. Just taking a moment to acknowledge whatever may have come up during practice for you. It's not trying to change it. There's nothing right and there's nothing wrong. It's just that little acknowledgement of what is. Just being here giving yourself deep gratitude for making the time and space to practice. And I give you deep gratitude for coming to practice with me. Namaste. Thank you. <laughs> mm, that's nice. I've never heard you that before and I do find tabletop difficulty in the lists. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, giving yourself like because it's in a normal hatha class doing um cat cow on forearms is quite um uh, like a, a a normal uh modification to offer but putting it onto the cushions can be just really nice and um, i'll just pause this hey sarah i hope you can hear me hi 